guys. Welcome back to Living Your Best Life. It's me, Coach Adam here. Sorry it's taken me so long to get back into a podcast. Um, quite honestly, I've just, I, so I made a video podcast last time and I've been trying to get another video podcast and trying to figure out what's the best perfect way to set it up. And I just, I've gotten caught up in this whole like, you know, make it perfect. But I'm not going to wait any longer because I'm making you guys wait just because I can't get my shit together. So we're going to try it this way right now. He's in Riverside F, uh, dot FM here. Shout out to Riverside. Um, not getting paid, just shout out because hopefully this works. Anyways, if you see me looking down here, I'm looking at my like my video. It's kind of weird. Anyways, welcome back. It's Coach Adam here. Um, if you're new to the podcast, sorry for that rant. Um, but if you're new here, thanks for joining. Um, just so you know, the podcast basically is is me talking about what I'm passionate about um, in my career. Uh, so I'm a health and nutrition coach. I'm a strength coach. Um, I train people from all walks of life. And over the years, I've realized that the education for health and nutrition and just overall wellness wellness for our bodies is just lacking. Um, and so I figured, hey, if I know things that can help people, why not? put it out there in a way that's easy to consume um, and not too technical and wordy and, you know, well, things that fly over your head, right? I want to try to simplify things as much as possible um, and also show that it, it's not as difficult as it's been made out to seem to live a healthy lifestyle. We just have to pay attention to what we're putting into our bodies. We have to pay attention to um, what we're putting into our minds and our brains. And we just have to pay attention to really what's going on in our lives. Um, so that's what this podcast is designed for to help you, um, be healthy and, and mentally healthy, emotionally healthy, um, in more ways than just fitness in more ways than just eating right. Um, cause there's a lot more that goes into it. So hopefully this podcast helps. Right. Um, so anyways, today is going to be um, benefits of meditation. I'm sure in, over the years you've heard, especially over the last few years, meditation has become very, very popular, um, which I think is great because there's so many benefits to it. And I think that it, it's kind of been lost, um, especially in like in our culture. If you live in the U.S., like on Western in Western society right we've lost so much connection to self to nature to stillness to quietness um and i think that if we were to bring that back um or really make an effort on emphasizing that at a young age and if we miss it at a young age and to emphasize it now as we're older i think we'll we could benefit as a society much much more um so if you haven't heard anything about meditation, maybe you learn a little bit here. Um, if you have heard about meditation and the benefits, well, then these are my, the, the article was like 13 or 15 <laughs> proven benefits of meditation. So I kind of narrowed it down to the ones that I thought were the most um, prevalent and, and seen and the ones that I've also noticed in my own life. Um, I actually started meditating a lot, not a lot, a long time ago, um, on and off, more off than on, let's be real. Um, but this year I've, I've made it a point to meditate um, at least Monday through Friday on the days that I'm up super early, make it part of my daily routine. Saturdays and Sundays are like a little different, so I don't want to give myself that rigid schedule because I know that I'm going to, I know myself, I find myself, I'm going to fail and I'm going to be like, all right, well, screw it. I'm not going to do anymore. So Monday through Friday, that's my meditation schedule. I meditate early in the morning for five minutes, and then I pick another time right around lunchtime to meditate for about 10 minutes. I've been doing that since day one of this year, January 1st, um, or January 2nd, I guess, or 3rd, whatever that Monday was. And I got to tell you, it's been, it's been such a good thing to have that as part of my routine. Um, I definitely feel more mental clarity. Um, I don't, I don't, like there's still stuff to stress about, 
it's life, but I don't feel like it weighs on me as much anymore. Um, cause I know that, you know, at the end of the day, things are going to happen and we just have to figure our way through it. Right. Um, so these are the important ones. Um, I have five, six, five proven benefits of meditation that, um, I think are the most beneficial to say the least. So the first one, it's going to help reduce strength, stress, reduce stress, not strength, reduce stress and help control your anxiety. Um, stress reduction is actually one of the most common reasons that people start to meditate, um, or look up how to meditate to reduce stress, how to meditate to reduce anxiety. Um, and that's because no mental and physical stress is caused by increased levels of cortisol, which is your stress hormone. Um, so when we have heightened levels of cortisol, we feel stress, we feel anxiety. Um, and this also produces a release of inflammatory chemicals called cytokines, which can disrupt sleep. Um, they promote depression, anxiety, they increase your blood pressure. So you're always feeling that like anxious feeling. Um, and they also contribute to fatigue and like brain fog, cloudy thinking, right? Like you're just kind of walking through a fog. Um, stress has a lot to do with that. There was an eight week study of meditation, uh, a meditation style called mindful meditation, which I think most people are familiar with mindful meditation. Um, and the inflammatory response that was caused by stress was shown to be reduced uh, throughout that eight week period or at the end of that eight week period. Um, and research has also shown that meditation is going to improve your symptoms of stress related conditions. So if you have irritable bowel sy syndrome due to stress, you have post-traumatic stress due to any uh, events in your, in your life, uh, fibromyalgia, as well as a stress related disorder that can also help reduce symptoms of those, dis of those conditions. Um, the second thing you're going to notice once you start meditating, you're going to have better emotional health. So it, so it promotes better emotional health. That leads to improved self-image and a more positive outlook on life. When you feel better about yourself, you feel better going out into the world. You feel better about being yourself to people around you. And you have a better outlook on life. You know that things aren't going to be just gloom and doom every day and, and that things are always going to go badly. When we have better emotional health, we we perceive the world differently and we see different blessings in our life. Uh, there was a review of more than 3,500 adults and they found that meditation improved their symptoms of depression. So 3,500 people feeling better about themselves is going to lift them up out of that depression. And then there's another study that found people who completed a meditation exercise experienced fewer negative thoughts afterwards. So the purpose of meditation is to kind of not stop thinking and, and kind of like, try to stop your brain. It's almost impossible to do that, but it's to have, it's to see these thoughts formulate in your brain, to see it create and just let it pass and not latch onto it, not give it any meaning, not give it any life. Right? So if we have a recurring theme of negative thoughts in our life and in our brain throughout the day, and we meditate and we slow that down and we kind of observe what we're seeing, we're able to recognize how often we have negative thoughts. So we are able to consciously minimize those in our life as well. That makes sense. That makes sense. It's gotta make sense. Um, and also those inflammatory chemicals I talked about earlier, those cytokines, cyto, cytokines, cytokines, the, the ones that affect mood and lead to depression, it also reduces those inflammatory chemicals. All right. So meditation already helping you with your mental health. That's huge. I think if, like I said earlier, if, if we adopted meditation as more a part of our routines, we'd see a, a much more fulfilled life. Let's say that that works for me. Third, you're going to enhance your self-awareness. So that kind of goes along with promoting emotional health and feeling good about yourself. Right. When you meditate, you may develop a stronger understanding of yourself, right? Like seeing your thoughts, seeing how those thoughts formulate, seeing what you're actually thinking about. It helps you be more aware of yourself and it helps you grow into a better you. It helps you evolve because you're realizing this is me. This is what I like about me. This is what I don't like. Let's, let's fix this, improve this. Let's work on myself. How do you grow unless you see yourself, right? So when you meditate, you, get into a mode of self inquiry, self inquiry, however you want to say that self inquiry, um, which it, 
it explicitly aims to help you develop a greater understanding of yourself and how you relate to the people around you. You don't know what you're like to other people until you take a step back and see yourself. Right. Um, so improving your self-awareness through meditation is going to help your relationships with other people as well. Right. Um, and as, as you gain that greater awareness of your, your thought habits, like the way your thought patterns occur, you can direct them towards more constructive um, thoughts, towards more constructive patterns, right? If we're like, if we know how, how our brain's going to um, react to a certain situation, we can kind of give ourselves a little hack and go, okay, this is what's going to happen when this happens. So let me react in this way so that I can go this way instead of this way and off the rails. Okay. Um, also Tai Chi is really good for enhancing that self-awareness. Um, and, and that's because it gives you an improved belief in your own capacity to overcome challenges. The philosophy of Tai Chi, um, helps you achieve that, um, an improved belief in your own capacity or ability to overcome t challenges. Okay. <clears throat> If you don't say okay with me after I say okay, then you're not really listening. So that's why I do it. <laughs> Make sure you're still paying attention. Um, fourth one, it's going to lengthen your attention span. If you're like me, self-diagnosed ADD, ADHD, then yes, yeah, self-diagnosed. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> your focus, your, your attention span can sometimes be short, right? Like freaking golf, like Dory, right? Um, but focused attention meditation is basically like weightlifting for your attention span. So if you practice focused meditation, focused attention meditation, it's going to help increase the strength and the endurance of your attention. All right. So lifting weights for your brain, <laughs> you know, you guys know, I like lifting weights. So lifting weights for your brain, it's going to help lengthen your attention span so that you can, uh, let's say you're reading a book, right? You can read longer without stopping and thinking like, holy crap, what the hell did I just read? I got to go back. I've done that so many times. I'm sure you've done that too. Or like when you're driving or right? you're on the freeway, you're just driving and then you suddenly pay, oh, how did I get here? Right? So um, probably need help with our attention span. Um, people who listen to a meditation tape experience improved attention and accuracy while completing a task. Driving. Or if you're at work on the computer, right? Like you would doze off in a la la land and start daydreaming. I do it all the time. That's what I'm saying. Self diagnosed ADD. Um, but, uh, look, mind wandering. I got ahead of myself here. One review concluded that meditation may even reverse patterns in the brain that contribute to mind wandering, worrying, and poor attention. Worrying is another big one. Like, um, that's, that's another, like, facet of daydreaming right well like your mind just wanders and starts creating like all kinds of crazy situations that don't even like exist but yeah all right and then also even if you do short periods of meditation like 13 minutes a day it's going to help enhance your attention and your memory after just eight weeks of consistent practice so you don't even need like to be doing it for years and years to feel the benefits a month two months 10 to 15 minutes a day. That's all you need. Okay, and then the fifth one, you're gonna improve your sleep, you guys. Nearly half the population struggles with insomnia at some point in their lives. That's like the biggest thing people struggle with. But people who meditate, they tend to stay asleep longer and they have improved insomnia symptoms. So meditation is gonna help your brain a lot. It's also gonna help you recover better because you're gonna sleep better. All right, and then becoming skilled in meditation may also help control or redirect the racing Runaway thoughts that often lead to insomnia. So if you can't sleep at night because you're overthinking, start to meditate. It'll and help. you guys, the best thing about meditation is that it's really accessible anywhere. You don't need any equipment. You don't need to go to a special like studio. You don't need to do anything. You can sit in your room. You can sit in the office. You can sit in your car. Anywhere you have time, space, just a few minutes a day. Like I said, five to ten minutes to start. Ten to fifteen minutes as you increase your capacity. Um, you can do it at home, you can do it at work, you can do it with a partner, whatever makes it easier for you to get to it, get to meditate. Um, and then there's two major styles of it. Focus attention, that's the one I told you about earlier, concentrates attention on a single object, 
thought, sound, or visualization. So you can really just focus on one thing. Um, and that kind of emphasizes ridding your mind of distractions. And the second one is open monitoring. Um, that one encourage, encourages more broadened awareness of all aspects of your environment. Train of thought, sense of self. So that may include becoming aware of more suppressed thoughts that you didn't know you had, um, suppressed feelings, maybe some impulses. So that may be a little more in-depth for more people, a little more challenging. Um, so I suggest starting with mindful meditation um, or like a focused meditation. All right, so set your alarm earlier in the morning. If you want to wake up early and do it, that's probably the best time I suggest, just so that you're, you know, awake, aware, and ready to start your day with meditation. Um, nighttime's good too if you want to fall asleep with it, but it kind of defeats the purpose of fall as falling asleep while meditating because you're supposed to really kind of quiet your mind and, and exit the meditation as well. Um, so. Start early in the morning or even like do it before lunch or after lunch. That's a good time to do it as well. Find videos on YouTube. Um, use an app. Uh, sit in silence for five minutes. <laughs> Try that. That's really tough too. Um, but anyways, I'm going to go. That was fun. Hopefully this video is good for you guys. But uh if you guys need any, any help with meditation, if you guys need any help with uh, any of the stuff I talk about here, um, my goal here is just to help you guys and help educate you on being healthier, not just, like I said, not just physically or nutritionally, but mentally as well. Um, so I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully it won't be so long between podcasts. Anyways, have a great week, you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Remember to love yourself and go be the best version of yourself.